is an exhausting, well, is it an exhausting night or am I just exhausted here on this uh, sort of a pleasant fall night? Although I think I hear the pitter-patter of raindrops on the roof of the tiny house here the, and bugs in a jar farm here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. I see that I forgot to put my shirt on. Oh, well. I just count put my shirt on all right so uh, I am exhausted guys here on Thursday October 6 2022 the little dog kept me up all night last night but he is back in the doomer doggy saddle so Sancho Bonza is back in the saddle good to have him back I guess so uh This is a pretty straightforward chronicle of the collapse. Uh, <laughs> we're going to touch on two stories. It looks like Bloomberg must be doing a whole series on King Coal. Uh, have to leave it to to Bloomberg News for a little uh, honest reporting about coal for anybody, any clueless moron on any level thinking coal is on its way out. Let Bloomberg disabuse you of this notion. Now obviously this is no great uh, <laughs> this is no great epiphany for any doomer with a brain, but just in case you're just trying to figure out the way the world works, let Bloomberg explain it to you. <clears throat> Climate systems breakdown looms as coal investments soar. Yes, they have this picture of this coal train looking a lot. I thought this was a picture of a millipede when I first saw it. Well, that is a coal train with all of the cars overloaded with the black gold. Anyway, all right. The coal industry has backtracked huh, on its pledges to phase out existing plants and halt new investments, putting our planet on a trajectory that could lead to a, quote, breakdown of our climate systems, close quote, according to a study led by the nonprofit Ergowald. Never heard of Ergowald. As warnings from climate scientists, quote, become more and more dire. Yes, close quote. Data revealing the actions of coal companies, quote, remains depressingly consistent. Close quote said Heffa Shuckling, director of Ergowald or Urgewald. I wish they would tell us a little bit about who Ergowald or Urgewald is. We have no clue. They don't uh, give us much to work with here. Almost half the coal industry is now expanding with China leading the way, according to the analysis published Thursday. Is it today? I guess today this came out. And nonprofits are not the only ones warning of the devastating fallout from continued expansion of the dirtiest fossil fuel. Goldman Sachs Group uh, Michelle Delavigna, who heads the Wall Street Bank's Natural Resources Research for EMEA, whoever EMEA is, would have been nice if Bloomberg had told us who that was, um, has dubbed the surge in coal finance a, quote, massive setback for the climate and warns that Europe's reliance on both coal and even diesel 
may stretch past this winter, do you think so? Scientists, meanwhile, have singled out coal, noting that there is no ha. Huh, there is no ha. Huh, no huh, hope of limiting temperature increases to the critical threshold of one and a half C if the world continues to finance new coal projects. Well, of course, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no uh, hope of that if we completely abandon coal, oil, and gas tomorrow. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, there's no uh, uh, hope of that one and a half. So you can throw that shit out the right out the window. But anyway. Uh, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says the world may be facing temperature increases of more than twice the one and a half C threshold as emissions continue to rise. And that would leave large swaths of the planet uninhabitable. Yes. <clears throat> this is uh, I Shucking said that quote the vast majority the vast majority of companies in the so-called global coal exit list the global coal exit list yes right quote still have no intention of retiring their coal assets, which are propelling us towards a breakdown of our climate systems. A real transition requires clear and near coal exit dates, close quote. Coal exit dates. Does anyone want to venture a guess when the last coal company will shut its doors on planet Earth? Uh, I am going to throw out 50 years. I will be long dead of old age. I will be dead and gone and forgotten before we see the, uh, the final coal exit date. Uh, the list is a survey of more than 1,000, more than 1,000 coal companies shows that 46% of them are still developing new assets and only 56 out of the 1,000 equivalent to 5.3% of the total have announced a coal exit date, but even those, but even those setting deadlines, you know, they are the 56 out of the more than 1,000 even suggesting a deadline, have settled on dates that are, quote, ridiculously late, Ergelwald said. Much of that is related to the energy policies of the governments in which the companies operate with China by far leading the way. Uh, this is Nathaniel Bullard, uh, a senior contributor to Bloomberg, blah, blah. Anyway, quote, coal is a global climate problem. Its expansion is concentrated in a very few places, and of course, China uh, will is leading the pack, and in India as well as China, it's India uh, certainly are, are the two huge players. And gee, shockingly enough, there is also more cash from the finance industry, the banksters behind it all flowing into coal, again, led by 
Chinese banks. Hmm. Reclaim Finance estimates that 190 banks and money managers still have no call policy. A further 272 have either weak or inadequate policies and only 28 banks have effective exit strategies. Yes, I would like to see the definition of an effective coal exit strategy according to the banksters behind it all. Okay, in the first nine months of this year, you know, through the end of September, banks have provided $26 billion in loans and bonds to the coal industry. Huh, this is up. The financing of coal is up 36% from the same period last year. China Securities and China Everbright Bank are listed as the two largest coal bond underwriters. China Everbright. <laughs> I love it. Uh, there's, a, there's some hopium. China Everbright. Huh. As if you're not aware of this, Coal has undergone a resurgence this year as Russia's invasion of Ukraine turbocharges all fossil fuel markets. The International Energy Agency uh, estimates that consumption of the dirtiest fuel will rise by 0.7% this year. And then next year, coal will hit an all-time high. So the International Energy, Energy Agency, along with Sam Mitchell, is making the prediction that 2023 will see the all-time high consumption and burning of coal in history. A little under a year ago, governments left the COP26 climate summit in Scotland having pledged to cut their use of coal. They meet again next month for the COP27 climate summit in Egypt. This year, with an energy crisis, a war and the prospect of recession casting a huge shadow over the talks. Yes, still, still, climate think tank, clim the clueless morons at climate think tank E3G says that it is not too late for coal companies to make good on their commitments to scale back. Yes, said Leo Roberts, who is research manager for the E3G's coal team. Yes, uh, so we're talking the, the fox guarding the hen house. We have seen an uptick in the number of coal power stations being kept online. Well, yeah, we have seen that, but that does not undermine pledges made at COP26 last year. Hmm. According to Shucking, however, it is clear that most of the coal industry is, quote, not transitioning. It's either developing new coal projects or dragging out the life of existing coal assets. Delaying has become a new form of climate denial. Yes, I mean, all of the, uh, all of the forms of climate denial 
And next to that one, they actually, Bloomberg has a whole series of these, but I just wanted to touch on one more. Just as uh, the IEA and I are predicting that more coal will be burned on planet Earth in 2023 than in any year in history, another new record has been met with coal. I think just this week. Huh. U.S. coal prices, this is in the U.S., U.S. coal prices climb past $200 as global energy crunch boosts demand. Wow. U.S. coal prices surged past $200 for the first time ever. This is uh, people wanting to make money off the uh, collapse of a planet I've been advising for years. U.S. coal prices surged past $200 for the first time as a global energy crunch drives up demand for the dirtiest fossil fuel. Spot price for coal rose to $204.95 a ton for the week ending September 30th, 30th, the highest in records dating back to 2005, according to data released Monday by the U.S. Energy Information Administration. Coal remains a leading fuel in power plants in the United States. Coal remains a leading fuel in U.S. power plants, and the soaring price of coal will ratchet up pressure on U.S. homes already struggling with record high electricity bills. About 20 million households across the country, or about one in six, have fallen behind on their utility bills. And you will not believe this. Wow, imagine, imagine this. The share prices of the big U.S. coal companies responded favorably. Don't forget our friends at Peabody Energy Corporation, shares rose as much as 6.5%. Uh, I don't know if they mean today or what day. In New York, Arch Resources climbed as much as 7.4%. Coal prices began surging as economies around the world recovered from corona panic lockdowns, driving up demand for electricity faster than coal miners and natural gas producers could boost supply for power plants. That was exacerbated when Russia's war in Ukraine upended energy markets and power plant demand for coal and natural gas has continued to rise amid record summer heat. Meanwhile, coal producers are running at full tilt and have little ability to boost output, even if they could. Clogged supply chains mean they would have trouble delivering any additional tons. All of that is putting steady upward pressure on prices which have surged to records not only in the U.S. but also in Asia and Europe. So if you've liked these uh, stories from Bloomberg, you might want to also see tsunami of shutoffs, meaning people getting their electricity shut off uh, this winter. 
tsunami of shutoffs looms with one in six households now late on their U.S. energy bills. Well, I guess if one out of six households in the U.S. get shut shut off, that ought to that ought to stop the burning of coal real quick. That ought to bring the emissions down real quick. Just shut off everybody's utility bill. But with that, I need to wrap this up because I'm getting chilly and I need to turn on my little electric heater. Uh, I love my little electric heater. As far as I know, we're paid up on the power bill here, but who knows? Get out there and uh, dig some coal while you still can. Uh, I got to get some shut eye. Because I got to side my outhouses tomorrow. Bye, guys. This little log looks like you have uh, pretty much called it a night yourself. Bye, guys.